today. From MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. It's week 15 of the NFL on EA Sports. and the New York Giants taking on Baker Mayfield at the Cleveland Browns. We are across the Hudson from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This is the scene just before we came on air. This New York crowd fired up by the arrival of their G-men as they burst from the locker room. They're ready to go as the Giants get set to match up with the Cleveland Browns. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And Charles, you take a look at this Giants ball club. They come in off a loss last time out, but they've been playing better than 500 ball the last couple months. Five wins in their last eight games. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they've been flawless all year long as they hit the home stretch at 13-0. And now they just have to guard against complacency. You still got to go out and earn it every week. The Browns offense getting ready for their first drive as they will do so behind their quarterback in his third year now from Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. It's a pretty bland game he had last time out. Ended up throwing one interception, didn't have a touchdown to offset it, but the team found a way to win. He found a way to lean on other parts of the offense that carried them through. Check on the numbers for Chubb from a week ago. He was creeping up toward 200 yards. Thought he was going to get there. Didn't quite make it, but also two rushing touchdowns. And even if he only got about half those numbers this week, his team would take it in a heartbeat, wouldn't they? Because last week, he was spectacular. On second down and four, Mayfield. And he completes it to Hunt. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a first down and a gain of 10. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen, because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. Nice pickup for a first down. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into giant territory. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they will pay dividends as the game progresses. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb. And he's going to get this pretty close to the first down marker at the Giants 42. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high power, You've got to find a way to hold them under 20, because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Mayfield on play action. And he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 22-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Of course, he was solid last week. AFC Offensive Player of the Week award. Two touchdowns in that game. Yeah, he's playing at a level right now where he's just breaking down defenses. Makes me remember when I was playing and my defensive back coach told me, listen, if you give up a touchdown pass, that's on me. I didn't coach you well enough. If you give up a second one, that's on you. And if there's a third one, I'm getting someone else in the game. <laughs> on first down, they'll run with Chubb. 
Patrick Onwasor up to make the tackle. We should mention, to go along with the great game he had last week, he was rightfully named AFC Offensive Player of the Week. And he shares that with his offensive line, the tight end, his fullback. He's looking for more and more of that in this game. They go with Chubb on second down. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. advantage when you start talking MVP might not be the case this year you think he's got a shot don't you I do I think he's got more than a shot but what he's going to need here down the stretch this late in the season he needs that big closing game that game that we're all going to reflect on and go oh my goodness did he put up a number let's say 200 plus A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. They'll run with Chubb. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Kareem Hunt is running back, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. It'll be a gain of five, but they do keep him out of the end zone, and now it's fourth down. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on four. Running for it. Here's Chubb. And he'll take it into the end zone for Brown's touchdown. Nick Chubb with his 28th touchdown, drawing level with Sean Alexander for the second most in a single year. And the Browns take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. And Seibert on for the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. So that one a 13-play drive in total. And Nick Chubb the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. it away and off it goes 
Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And Ballantyne going to sit on this one. That'll be a touchback. The Giants go to work on offense for the first time, and it's Daniel Jones leading the way, the number six pick in the 2019 draft. I think his task in this game is really simple. Eliminate the turnovers. He threw two interceptions last week. I can't believe I led with that because he had three touchdown passes. Right, right. So there's a lot of good that he did, but he's got to take care of the ball better. The ball has to go to guys wearing the jerseys that they're wearing this week, not the opposition. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. On the ground, this is Saquon Barkley. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. It's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second down, here's Barkley. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. They'll try to run for it with Barkley. Now he will have a first down here at about the 40. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. here on first and ten and he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter after one seven nothing on EA Sports the last run got three now here's second and seven from the gun Jones that's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. That one, a first down pickup of eight. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Gets this out to Saquon Barkley. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball, because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't happen at contract time. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. First down, Giants. Jones to Ingram. Make it happen! And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out for Forget trying to set anything up. They think they have the advantage. They think they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Jones with a handoff to Barkley. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. Now we've got a giant player here, slow to get up after that last play. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium.
The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Operating from the gun. Jones throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Golden Tate, his intended receiver. But now it's third down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Now Jones on third down. He'll get this out to Barkley complete. And he will have a Giants first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A nice first down pickup on a gain of six. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. Nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From the 27, Jones. They'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. First and 10 at the 11. A give to Barkley on the gun. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater. He just made a great play there. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Larry Ogunjobi in for the sack. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games. Now the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. The fake field goal catches everyone by surprise. And the Giants are an extra point away from tying up this football game. I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. It's 
It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that amazingly, a 17-play drive, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kicks away this taken in about four yards deep and ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped at the 23 take over first and 10 at their own second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense after the long touchdown drive we just saw you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the win out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time too had to sit over there for a little while didn't they you know they were eager amped up to get back on the field after just scoring hoping to get the ball back quickly that didn't happen so I'd say come out just kind of get started again you know they not have to be anything dramatic just get moving get loose again and see if they can get it downfield here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle and he's brought down after a very nice game a good pick up there 26 yards the goal for any offense versus his own defense find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Mayfield now from the 50. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. And one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. He'll take a shot for the end zone and nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try and throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. And again, it's Mainfield. That one is caught by Hunt. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 15-yard line. Give them 22 there on the third down conversion. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with it. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Going to the air again with Mayfield. This is caught, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, oh, Cleveland. Seibert now to add the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drives seven plays in length. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The 
the kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. And you have to figure they won't just sit on the football here in the final minute. The way things have gone, they need to try to make something happen offensively. But maybe they should. Maybe they should sit on it here because of what you just said. They haven't made anything happen offensively. Getting ready to go into the half, give them a chance to take a deep breath, exhale a little bit, and start over. I don't know if this is the time to push it myself. Yeah, right now under 100 yards of total offense. Catch made by Slayton. He's going to pass the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Here's Jones throwing on first down. That's complete to Slayton. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun, Jones. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Pushing foul, roughing the passer, defense. Oh, no! The hit comes late, we saw it, there's your flag. And we know that there's a guideline, right? Ball's gone, you get one step. If you're within one step of the quarterback, you can hit him as long as it's still done legally. But anything outside of that, looks like an extra step was involved. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. That's complete. He's got Barkley out of the backfield. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Operating from the gun, Jones. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Incomplete. Here's second and ten now from about the 32. Throwing again. Jones. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. He was looking for Caden Smith, the tight end. And that takes us from second to third down. Aldrick Rosas now to try the Giants' field goal. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hash. That is inches from the upright. It's no good. Wide to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. disappointing when you miss a field goal but when you're playing against a defense this good you and I both know that's a crucial miss because you can't afford to leave any points out there you've got to take them when you can good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 39 yard line oh he'll let one go deep for Higgins that's going to be knocked away and incomplete we have hit halftime still two more quarters to go we'll take a timeout We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Okay, Brandon, time for a sprint to the finish, as it's time to get you caught up with what's happening around the NFL here in a pivotal Week 15. We'll begin up at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, and it's the Ravens who are out in front at halftime. The Ravens trying to finish that one off and claim victory. From there, let's get over to the Rockies to check out the Broncos at home in Denver. And you can see they trail the visiting Buffalo Bills in that ball game. Josh Allen has a touchdown pass. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And at halftime, they trail the visiting Seahawks in that ball game. Russell Wilson with three touchdown passes. In the game you're watching, it's been Baker Mayfield with a strong first half. His guys have the lead 
as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. The Giants set to get the football, and they trail here as we get back underway in the second half. Takes this about five yards deep, and Ballantyne get a sit on this one. That'll be a touchback. The New York set to take the field, and they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive, missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there, you've given yourself a chance, you're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He's back to throw here to start the drive. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 10 yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Got exactly what they wanted there out of the RPO and had the defense out of position. One word for you there. Excellent. Because he read all the keys properly, made the right decision, and look at the result. Pretty substantial game. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On the draw, this is Barkley. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Jones. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Olivier Vernon in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback, because he had no chance to block him. Here's Riley Dixon now, and surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. He punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Landry now on the return. A seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. 12 yards there and a first down. And a nice carry and a first down for Cleveland. Nice pick up there. Nick Chubb is a bright spot for this Cleveland offense. He finished second in the league in rushing in 2019 with nearly 1,500 yards on the ground and got into the end zone eight times. And how about this for durability? Has not missed a game in his NFL career. What a bounce back from a big-time knee injury while at the University of Georgia. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. 
Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. The last run got nine. That leaves them with second and a yard. A run for Nick Chubb. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. It's a first down on a gain of 10. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On the ground, it's Chubb. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. gain of a couple and that's going to leave him with a third and about five just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry no not at all they did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up Becoming just the second player with 30 touchdowns in a single year. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. And Nick Chubb hit 21.95 miles an hour on a long touchdown run in 2019. Fourth fastest in the NFL. And he flashed the big time speed again there. And there's an old chestnut of an expression called getting on your horse. And I hate to use it, but I'm going to right here because it absolutely applies. How about the head of steam he had behind him? And he was absolutely galloping downfield. That was something to see. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to seven. So this drive spans seven plays. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off, as he does so with a touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taken about seven yards deep. And Ballantyne going to sit on this one. That'll be a touchback. New York ready to go again offensively. And here we are almost through three quarters of play. And this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL where it's a pass first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And he'll drop here to throw. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. But the passing windows are just not there. And that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. Now the throw here complete on the right sideline. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, Jones. And that is intercepted by the Pro Bowl quarterback, Denzel Ward. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. 
Now, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. They run. Chum. Down to about the 22 here. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down. Get to the fourth quarter. Try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Stadium. Here's a second and ten. Now Chubb. Oh, he breaks another. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and four. And again, it's Chubb. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Seven yards on the pick. Right there, and now they've got a first and goal. And we'll see the effect that Ben's are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slow with that front seven reacting to the football. Almost like body blows and boxing. Slowing down. And they're really starting to take over in this game. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll try to run with Hunt. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. Kareem Hunt with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Browns take advantage of field position and a turnover to cash this one in. means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. Cybert on for the PAT. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. A drive that time of six plays. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. First and 10 at their own 
As the Giants head back out there, let's take a look at the playoff picture in the NFC. And it's right about this time of the year that you start to say this is when the cream rises to the top. Week 15, three weeks left to go, but still plenty to be determined. It certainly is because we all know everyone is aiming for that number one seed. But failing that because only two teams in the NFL get a bye, one from each conference, that question becomes who's hot? Who's peaking at the right time as you start the playoffs? And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. The job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Another try after the first down sack. Jones. And he's going to go down. Back in his own five yard line. It's a sack. Miles Garrett in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches. And when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. After that sack, third and long, tough spot for Jones and the Giants. Operating from the gun, Jones. Oh, trying to fit it into Shepard, but it's intercepted. Picked up by MJ Stewart. And did he get in? No, they'll mark him down at the one yard line. And that pick just sets him up beautifully right down near the goal line. I remember being in a defensive meeting back when I was in college. And our defensive coordinator says, we're going to call this be who you are defense. D linemen, you play the run. Linebackers, be aware of anything. And secondary, you play the pass. That way, you're all set, ready for whatever they put out there. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Here's Cybert now to add the extra point. He's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And down he goes just shy of the 25. Now penalty marker is down. Let's see what that's about. Oh, why are we doing this? Well, that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. But that field position after the return wasn't terrific. It's not a great starting field position as well. Jones on first down. Finding Sterling Shepard for his first catch. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 
15 yards is the pick up there on the drive, starting very nicely. First down. What a throw right there for the first down. He has taken some real punishment in this game, but still standing in the pocket completing that one. He's a flat-out warrior. There's no question about that. How about him stepping up into the teeth of the rush and delivering there for that big strike and that big pickup? Jones now on first and 10. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. From the gun, Jones toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Now Jones to throw on third down. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Well, it wasn't a big strike. But that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Operating from the gun, Jones, incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw again, Jones. And this is going to be incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here. You've held the team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. And Tate's got it. And he will have a Giants first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First catch so far for Tate, and he's got a first down. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 41. the gun Jones and that's going to be incomplete so much for the best laid plans and best designed plays that was good coverage along the sidelines no place for that one to get in there it sails incomplete here's Jones to throw again this one is Slayton over the middle He'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Jones from the gun on third down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. And that is intercepted by the Pro Bowl quarterback, Denzel Ward. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They're suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but being able to 
adjust to oh, anything they tried to throw at him and beating him into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well prepared. Cybert on for the PAT. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line. So a net negative there of four yards. Back on offense, New York gets set to take over. And they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Miles Garrett racking up sack number 12 for him on the year. That right now, that's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. This has been a rough one, to put it mildly for them. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Now Jones throwing on third and long. He's going to let it fly. And the throw there going to be incomplete. As this old brain remembers, the Aussie five wide receivers on the field as a defender. I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And another tackle broken. A terrific return there, 27 yards all told. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Brown's offense trotting back onto the field. And they just continue to roll right along, really. This has the looks of yet another victory as they hope to polish it off here in quarter number four. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10 at the 45. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb, and he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brings up second and five. But Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves.